What's up everybody, it's your boy Wes Grant and you're watching Suburban Nerd. This is the channel I give my nerd views on today's nerd news. In today's nerd news, we're going to be talking about, of course, as you can see right here, Captain Marvel. Because Captain Marvel has dropped some new images and I'm going to show you guys what has gone down below. Also, we've got a new Halloween trailer and I'm going to tell you my opinions on it. And we all know that Eminem has dropped a fire hot new album out of nowhere. But what you don't know is he has one song that's going to be on the soundtrack of the Venom movie. We've got Ben Affleck maybe has written the best Batman script ever. And also we've got the, the head honcho, CEO, whatever, of Warner, Warner Brothers Motion Pickers talking some good response news about the screening for the Aquaman movie. So the first thing we're going to be talking about is, of course, right here, Captain Marvel because Captain Marvel like I said I'm gonna try and see if I could get it put down the link down below but Entertainment Weekly has dropped a whole bunch of new images not just from the set but the cover of the magazine they have pictures of Samuel L. Jackson probably DH because he looks a lot younger you've got a whole bunch of things you got pictures of the Kree the scroll and this um, the one thing that they uh, dropped the nugget on is the fact that this will not be an origin movie this will actually be taking place with Cap, Cap, um, Captain Marvel, or Captain Marvel. She has already developed her power. She already has her powers fully. She's in control, fully controls it, and she's gonna be on a Kree world, and she's gonna be part of the elite Kree uh, force called the Star Force. And they're think of like MI6, think of it like that, or uh, Navy SEALs. But they're gonna be the elite force for the Kree. And it's going to be led by Jude Law's character, Captain Marvel, and also on the crew that I would, did not believe is going to actually be uh, what's the name, J Digimon, who uh, Hansu, who played Korath the uh, Pursuer, the guy, pretty much the black guy that was in the beginning of Guardians of the Galaxy, the one that was going after or was fighting with Chris Pratt's Star Lord, and also you're going to have um, Lee. Lee Pace, who's playing Ronin, who played Ronin in Guardian of the Galaxy as well, who's going to be in this movie. So I don't know what's going on, but they have it in the images. You see them in the images, and that kind of surprised me. I didn't know the uh, Karath was going to be up in this. Uh, so I'm definitely interested. Now, normally, I would think they would try and do maybe a, a origin story somewhat, because... No one really knows Captain Marvel. Like, she's out of nowhere. Like, us comic book nerds, we know Captain Marvel. Boy, do we know Captain Marvel. But, <laughs> not being a perp, I'm just saying, we know her, but the rest of the world really doesn't. Like, the rest of the world, like, when that end scene credit for, Cap uh, for Avengers Infinity War showed up, and you saw that logo showed up, I was in you know, I just straight up heard people like, who the fuck's that? You know what I'm saying? Like, no one knows who she is. I've gone through the lore of her, basically, you know, it's it's, it's this whole thing as far as Captain Marvel, Shazam, and then, like, you know, Fawcett, um, comics selling, uh, losing the rights or whatever, and then DC having it, and then having to give it to Marvel because they can't use Marvel, and then Marvel created a character named Marvel who was a Kree super, uh, super soldier, and then somehow Carol, Carol Danvers got her powers by him saving her, and then his power transferred to her somewhat, so then she had the powers too, and then it's this whole thing. But I just gave you it in a nutshell. But they're not, it doesn't seem like they're going that route as far as the storyline. Um, I, don't, I don't know what they're going to do, but they're going to pretty much show her already having a power, doing what she's doing, being a part of an elite force, and I'm down for it. It's going to be on the uh, the planet, the Kree planet of Ahala. And this movie's coming out March 8th, 2019, which can't come, can't come soon enough. I, I can't wait to see it. So, like I said, I'm just going to put this away. Captain Marvel. Thing. I just figured I'd just have that just for, you know, a little visual of the Captain Marvel story. So, next we're going to talk about is the Halloween trailer. Halloween trailer... Uh, I, th I think I have the trailer, so I'm going to try and see if I can put that link up right there. But the Halloween trailer shows Michael Myers, and it shows uh, Laurie Stroke, Strode. And, yeah, she's ready for him. Like, she's literally saying that she's been waiting so long for him to get free so she can kill him. Literally, like, that's what she was hoping for, for him to get free. Which, I'm like, um, I guess she knew he wasn't going to get killed in the prison or wherever he was. She just knew he was going to try and get out and try and kill her 
or whoever her family or but she's come prepared. She has trap doors everywhere. She has like an arsenal of rifles and, and shotguns and all these types of things. Like I, in a, in a way, I'm I'm worried for I'm worried for Michael Myers because she's come prepped. But you know what? Michael Myers is always gonna find a way, no matter how slow he moves. Somehow he's gonna find a way to get there and kill people because the dude's cray. And just like they say, you don't know karate, you know crazy. I know that's the corniest line you ever heard, but that's what Michael Myers pretty much is. Crazy, plum loco. You don't, like, I don't think, he's to that mental state where he doesn't feel pain because he's just so gone. So, hey, I wasn't looking forward to it before, but after this trailer, I'm definitely looking forward to it now. Next on Inner News, we're going to be talking about Eminem's new song, which I'm going to just play a little bit of it. Um, probably about 20 seconds because I don't want this to get demonetized or taken away, so hopefully just listen real quick. <laughs> I'm just giving that, stopping right there. But you can sort of hear they were trying to do that Venom voice in the back of uh, uh, back of Eminem's rap when he's going. And I'm like, this thing, the, the, the song sounds hot. But what you guys don't realize is Tupac's on there as well. I didn't play the Tupac because, like I said, I wasn't trying to play a whole, like, 30 seconds of the song. I just wanted to get you so you could at least hear this new Hot Fire song that's going to be on the track, soundtrack of the Venom movie. And also, it's going to be on the Eminem album. So that's one thing to look forward to. The video, I'm going to try and see if I can put the link down below and see. Because it's, the music video itself, it's just clips of the movie. There's nothing really crazy. I, it doesn't really even show Eminem. They have a bunch of different videos that are uh, some are like days old or some are uh, like a week old or something. like. I don't know which one's which, but this official one, it says official video. It actually just has clips from the movie with the rap played over it. Next, we've gone to the Ben Affleck story, which... This was this is where it gets crazy. Ben Affleck's script supposedly is the best thing ever because uh, Jay Oliva, uh, Jay Oliva or Oliva, who pretty much is the director of animated movies such as The Dark Knight Returns, Flashpoint Paradox, and also the Doctor Strange movie, uh, the animated movies, and he's also the storyboard uh, director, like project director. Of a lot of movies that we don't uh, that you guys know, like Batman vs Superman, you've got uh, Justice League, Thor Ragnarok, Deadpool, and a whole bunch of other movies. He's just the it guy that people go to for storyboards. And storyboards, if you don't know, pretty much it's just uh, all these little pictures, just drawn with sketches showing what's going to happen in each scene of the movie all the way through. And he was actually working with Ben Affleck when Ben Affleck was originally supposed to direct the new Batman movie, which was titled The Batman. Which I'm not sure if it still is, but he already set up storyboards for Ben Affleck's film, and he read the script and he loves it. He literally said that this is these are his words. Someone was um, going on on Twitter talking about this the script or talking about the whole Batman movie, and this guy, this cop, came out of nowhere and was like, "Hi, Bill. The original Affleck script for Batman for the Batman movie was the best Batman script I have ever read." Ben Affleck had a kick-ass story, and I believe the audience and the fans would have loved it. This, these are his words, and this is a guy that knows Batman lore. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's worked on all these DC movies, so for him to say that this is the best one ever is definitely a standing ovation as far as what Ben Affleck would have done, because everyone wanted this movie. DC just didn't couldn't get their shit together, and that's the problem with it. That's that's the worst thing about this. DC didn't know what they wanted to do, and they sacrificed something that would have been so great, just because they just want oh they want to do this. Cause look at it now, they don't even have like Ben Affleck's Batman or the Ben Affleck. They don't even know if he's actually gonna be the next Batman. The Batman movie still isn't even officially. You've got Matt Reeves that's gonna be directing it, but other than that, you don't really have any more info about it. They're already, but they're talking about other things like the Harley Quinn, the Gotham City Sirens. You've got they're talking about like all these movies that no one really cares about. Get a solid Batman movie. Get a sequel to Man Ver uh, to Man of Steel. Focus on your main your poster boys of of the DC. You know what I'm saying? Comic books, but. That's, I, like, I, I guess Ben Affleck, like, after a while with the interviews, you could see that he just was losing faith and he just didn't care no more. That's why I don't even know if he's really going to be in a, a Batman the next. He's he's obligated for one more scene, but who knows what it's going to be. But also, 
if 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 they actually do this, I'm hoping they use somewhat of a screen uh, script. Like I'm hoping Matt Reeves used somewhat because they also said that this was going to be the best Batman and Deathstroke stuff ever seen, as far as like movie wise, because we really haven't seen a movie. But they were going to show them. They were going to have a bunch of scenes and. Uh, I, Joe Manganiello even gave a thumbs up to these tweets. So, hey, I, I'm hoping it still works out. I'm hoping Ben Affleck still might be the Batman. I'm hoping that they might use the script because the script supposedly was the best thing ever. And you don't just throw out the best thing ever. Even though Matt Reeves is coming on, he was going to want to do his own script. But hopefully he, he kind of sees what gold he has in his hands and doesn't just chuck it out the window. So hopefully that will work out. Next, we've got Warner Brothers. Uh, the, the the chairman of the Warner Brothers Motion Picture Group, uh, Toby Emmerich, he basically came out and said that the, the screening was great and people liked the movie. Or his exact words is this. I'm going to read it. It's, it's not too hot or too cold. James Struck, or James Wan, the one that directed, also directed, you know, Conjuring or whatever, but James Struck a great balance between fun and jeopardy, edge and wonder, comedy and strategy. Or, oh, sorry. Tragedy. Uh, James created a total original underwater universe, just as Patty Jenkins did with the Mascara, the Wonder Woman movie. James Atlantis is cool and compelling, unlike any world we've seen on film before in a superhero movie or any other. So, those words are good, but let's just say I believe they said the same thing for the Justice League movie. But I'm not going to say nothing because, like I said, James Wan is a good director and he does do good movies. He did miracles when it came to the uh, the, the Fast and Furious. It was a Fast 7 when, when um, I, forget, I forget his name, uh, Chris, 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 I can't remember the name. Paul, sorry. It was Paul Walker. When Paul Walker died, James Wan came in and somehow made it a great movie still. With the little bit of things, even though like the tragedy of Paul Walker dying, they still somehow, he still got that movie together. And it was still pretty damn good. In fact, they hit a billion dollars. So, you know what? I sort of, I pretty much trust James Wan. I just don't trust DC. But seeing how I believe DC kind of held their hands off of this one with James Wan, I'm hoping it probably is really good. I'm just, like, my fingers crossed. Hoping it's good. Going to be good. And then last of all, for DC News, we've got the DC Universe. The thing that pretty much everybody's been getting these damn ads on the YouTube videos every time you click dun, dun, tick -tun, dun, dun, tick -tun, and you always see these things showing up with Batman and Superman and old cartoons whatever but these, if you guys don't know the DC Universe is pretty much going to be all access pass to anything DC the shows the movies the comic books everything you just pay one fee and you have access to pretty much everything DC which sounds pretty good if you if you know if you want because you know comic story and whatever you've, you've got you'll have the comic books and DC Sorry, Marvel, but when it comes to the storylines for, for these superheroes, DC just got you beat. They really do have you beat majority, especially most of the Batman stuff, like Hush, and like, just, I'm just saying, the Court of Owls, you, you, it's a lot of stuff. Um, but that's going down, uh, it's going to be out September 15th, that's when it's going to be active and live for everybody, and it's actually, that's going to be on Batman Day, so, hey, Batman Day for everybody, hopefully you guys will enjoy that. And then last thing we're going to talk about is a dude, his name is called Jeffrey Owens. If you guys don't know Jeffrey Owens, he was a boyfriend or husband to the older, the older daughter of the Cosby show. And just recently, like, post, pictures were posting how he was uh, working at a Trader Joe's in L.A., and someone, he's been pretty much like job shamed, like people have been calling out, be like, yo, what's... Like, uh, like, oh, this dude used to be on the show, now he's working at a trader job. Yo, the dude has money. I think he probably has a good amount of money staved up, like, maybe, like, 300K, whatever. But he's not living large, and he has to work, you know what I'm saying? These actors, like, a lot of these actors from the 90s, they, they were in great big shows, but they're not doing anything now. So don't hate on the dude because he's working a regular job. I'm sorry, just, that's what it is. And it's funny because my mom just started working in a, in a clinic or something like that in, in Montclair, in uh, Upper Montclair, and she just saw the dude, and the dude's over here, and it's crazy because she she didn't even know who he was until people just started taking pictures, you know, which a lot of times you don't realize, you don't always know who, but because he's been in the media just recently, that's why everybody, and I'm sure he's loving this attention because, you know, who wasn't, he used to be the big thing, now, now you know, he's nowhere, but now he's, like, actually, he's got 
Tyler Perry is actually going to be having him uh, on on some on some of his projects, which I'm I'm great on get, great great to get back, and I'm I'm hearing that he's actually done that for other like Rudy or whatever, like like he's done that for some other people from the Cosby Show. So hey, good on you, Jeffrey Owens, and um yeah, Gre Gregory or yeah, yeah yeah Jeffrey Owens, and like I said, don't hate on the dude for working. Just let him live. Let him, let him be. And I'm, I'm, if he, if he, if these roles really strike really good for for the Tyler Perry things, maybe you might see him even more. You know what I'm saying? So best wishes to him. And that's pretty much what I'm gonna end it on a positive note. So that's gonna be the last thing for the daily nerd news. So remember to put on those notifications. Remember to like the video. Hopefully you did like this video. Remember to uh, subscribe. Check out my last daily nerd news. And remember to, to check out my playlist of nerd news remember i'm west grant you've been watching suburban nerd and you've just been notified see you guys tomorrow and also remember comment down below want to hear from you